Okay, so thanks everyone for coming. Um, like you heard, my name is Zainab Alshel, and I'm giving the neuroanatomy seminar this year. So last year's and a couple of years before then, um, Marco Lodger was giving the talk, and um, some of the slides that I use here today are his. Um, so uh, if you're aware of his presentation, some of them will be familiar to you. Um, so uh, this talk is uh, aimed at those who don't really have a neuroanatomy background or to those who have been working for so long at like one region in the brain and they've forgotten the rest of the brain. So this is like a refresher for them. So I thought I'd start by, um, oh, just before I start. So there are some sections within the, the talk that I will be asking you to answer some questions. Um, so if you can actually type your answer in the Q and A section, um, and then that'll be, that'll, that'll be how you're answering some of the questions. And then there are some quizzes as well. So, um, here we go. All right, so uh, some resources that I think are really helpful um, when you're uh, studying neuroanatomy is the neuroanatomy th through clinical cases. This is especially helpful if you learn well um, from you know, clinical studies. Um, and then there's also the Digital Anatomist, which is an online uh, website that uh, is really, I'm sorry, my kitten is playing with my screen. So this is really good for um, regions of interest that you're, uh, that you're looking at. Um, and this is really nice because they use actual specimens and then you can click on the region and it'll tell you what that region is. Okay, so then you have the iSurf app, which is the free surfer app. Um, and it's really nice because anywhere you are on the train, if you see a region of the brain and you're like, okay, I, I need to know which area that is, you can quickly pull up the, the, uh, the free surfer app and you'll know um, what it is. I personally really like the coloring books. Um, this really helped me at the very beginning. Um, there's neuroanatomy color, coloring books and there's like anatomy for every region of the, uh, of the body as well. Um, you can kind of get them anywhere. Um, they're all pretty good, every one that I've used and every one that I've seen. So I don't really recommend a specific one. Um, and then you we also have the online video of this seminar available on the YouTube Martinez Center channel. So right now the one that's up there is Marco Lodge's one, which is really good. It's a really good watch. Um, so those are some resources. Um, so before we usually jump into anything new, we like to orient ourselves. Um, so there's one orient, there's two types of orientations that I'm going to introduce you to you today. So the first one is in reference to the body axis, which never bends. So superior is kind of always uh, the top of the head. Um, and then you have the uh, inferior, which is towards the feet, anterior is to the front and posterior is to the back. So that kind of never changes. And then we have the orientation in reference to the long axes of the nervous system, which does bend. So for example, if we're looking over here, we have the top part of the brain up until the mid brain diencephalic junction. So the, uh, the, the top part will be dorsal and then ventral, caudal, and then rostral. However, once we cross the mid brain diencephalic junction, that flips a little bit. So we have the top part rostral and then Downwards, we have towards the tail, you have the caudal, and then to the back, you have the dorsal, and then to the front, um, we have ventral. Okay, so uh, typically when we're looking at a brain region, we're looking at a section through the brain. So I'm going to introduce to you some of the sections that we, um, uh, there's something in the chat. Okay, yep. Um, so typically, we're looking at the planes of section. So the first plane of section is the horizontal plane or also known as, known as the axial or transverse section. So uh, this, this is a kind of thing, if you're thinking about the horizon, so that's the section through the brain, just through your head like this. I don't know if you can see me, but <laughs> I'm trying to demonstrate this to you. And then we have the coronal. So if you imagine like a tiara, so that's the kind of section of the brain that you're looking at. Um, and then we have the sagittal plane, so to, to the side, um, so thinking of a bow of an archer. And so what that looks like on, a, oops, on an MRI scan, for example, so the horizontal section or the axial section here is, is going through, again, thinking about the horizon. And then you have the coronal, thinking of the tiara, and then the sagittal section. So just for reference, these are the ears on the sides of the head, and then this is the nose and then the back of the neck. 
All right, so let's jump into the divisions of the brain. So we're gonna start on this side over here, the right side. So the top part in red, you have the telencephalon. So this is made up of the cerebral hemispheres, including the cortex, white matter, and subcortical structures. And then as we move down, we have the diencephalon, so made up of the thalamus and the hypothalamus and other associated structures. Um, so we're gonna go into more detail a little, a little later. And then as we go further down, we have the brain stem and it's made up of the midbrain, the pons, and then the medulla. And then on the back here, we have the cerebellum. You can also split it into these regions here, but for the humans, we usually use to, like to use this, this division. Okay, so some of the neuronal cells, oh, the neuronal cells of the central nervous system, so they're the neurons, um, they are the main functional units of the nervous system. So these are the ones that send electrical impulses. They're made up of three main regions. So we have the cell body or the soma. So this contains the nucleus. We also have the dendrites. Uh, so these are right here. And these are the receiving end of the, of the neurons. So when information is being sent from another neuron, um, it's being sent through to this neuron through the dendrites. Okay, and then we have the axon here. So this is, this is the, the, it's kind of like a rod, um, and this propagates the signal to, uh, well, through the axon terminal to the synapse, which is then where, when it's uh, communicating to another neuron's dendrites. Okay, so a collection of cell bodies makes up the gray matter, and a collection of axons here makes up the white matter of the brain. So what, is, what, what am I talking about? So by now, I hope we all know what a brain looks like, at least on an MRI. So usually we can see some gray matter over here, for example, um, and then some white matter in the middle. So the gray matter is usually the cerebral and the cere cerebellar cortices. So this is the cerebellum and some nuclei within the brain. Again, we're going to go into more detail a little later. Um, and then we also... Oh, and so then the white matter is made up of, again, the axons of the, of the neurons. So these are made up of the commissural fibers. So commissural fibers are the ones that connect the left and right hemispheres together. So these are the corpus callosum and the anterior and posterior commissures. I'm going to show you what they, what they are a little later, where they are. Um, and then we have the association fibers. So that connects different regions within the same um, hemisphere. And then we have the sensory and motor tracts. So these are projection fibers. So this is sending information from the somatosensory and motor cortices down through the spinal cord. Okay, so then, the, so those are the neuronal cells of the central nervous system. So let's quickly jump into the non-neuronal cells briefly of the central nervous system. So also known as the neuroglia or glial cells. Um, so these are, for example, we're gonna start with astrocytes. So astrocytes are star-shaped looking cells. Um, and they regulate extracellular ionic concentration. They also support neurons. They contribute to blood-brain barrier. And more recently, we've come to appreciate them more uh, because they are able to modulate neuronal activity. So they're actually more a, a very important cell in the brain. So um, another non-neuronal cell of the central nervous system are the microglia. So these are the resident macrophages of the central nervous system. So uh, throughout the body, we have the macrophage as the immune defense, um, but then in the brain, we actually have the microglia. Uh, so these are the main immune defense in the brain. Uh, so that's over here. And then we have the oligodendrocytes. So these are the, uh, these are the cells that produce the myelin sheath. So if we look at the axon, so this is the axon of a neuron, um, they are surrounded by myelin, myelin sheath, and this uh, increases the rate of transfer through the cell, which is really important. And then we have the ependymal cells. So these are the cells that line the ventricles and the spinal cord, and they just assist with the movement of the cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the cerebral hemispheres. So typically people have two, um, one on the left, one on the right. Um, they're interconnected by corpus callosum, anterior commissure, and the posterior commissure. And then in some individuals, the uh, interthalamic adhesion. So uh, remember the uh, corpus callosum and the anterior and posterior commissure are white, uh, uh, white matter. So, I'll show you exactly uh, what they are. So this is the corpus callosum over here, right? And then the anterior and the posterior commissure, also known as the AC 
and then PC. So for those of you who do a lot of scanning, typically we like to align our field of view parallel to the ACPC line. Um, so I guess it's really important to know how to find that. Uh, so one way you can find that is if you find the uh, corpus callosum, which is just over here, it's very hard to miss. Um, so this is a mid-sagittal section, just for reference. Uh, so you find the corpus callosum, right? And then it looks like there's a band of fiber that's coming off of it. However, this is not connected to it. It's a completely different structure. It's the fornix. But if you look for that fornix, so this kind of C-shaped over here, at some point it does a vertical dive downwards, down through towards the spinal cord. So just in front of that, so just rostral to it, you have the anterior commission. So that's one way you can find it. Okay, does that make sense? Yep, great. Okay, so um, that's the anterior commission. And then to find the posterior commission, you look for the brainstem, so to, uh, the, the, the top of the brainstem, so the midbrain. So just rostral to that, or uh, the aqueduct, which is here. But uh, we're going to say midbrain at this point. So just rostral to that, you have a C-shaped uh, structure here. So this is the posterior commission. Okay, so typically we like to line it through the uh, anterior posterior parallel to that. Okay, so um, in each hemisphere, we have the cortex, which is made up of the gyri and the sulci. We have the white matter. We have some subcortical structures that we're going to go through. But uh, let's begin with the cortex. So we have, it's composed of gyri and the sulci, um, and that's, it's kind of convoluted. And this is so it can actually fit in our heads, so our brains can fit in our heads. So the, it's composed of the gyri, which are the hills over here, and then the sulci, which are the valleys, okay? And if you have a really deep sulcus, um, you actually have a fissure. And so there are four undisputed lobes um, in the cortex. Uh, the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobes, um, and some people may add limbic and insular, but that's up for discussion. So let's go through the lobes. So we have the frontal lobe over here. Okay, so this is in the orange, orangey color. Um, and this is separated from the parietal lobe, which is just behind it. So just for reference sakes, this is the front of the brain, so your eyes will be sitting over here. This is the back, the cerebellum, and then the the brainstem will be coming out through this. Um, so again, the frontal lobe is at the front. Uh, hard to miss, it's the, the largest one, I believe. So then we have the parietal lobe, which is just behind it, and it's separated from the frontal lobe with the central fissure. So uh, the central fissure, I will give you some tips on how to find it. Um, and then on, on here, on the, on, the, on, the, on the lateral side, so lateral is towards like outwards and then medial is inwards, or I might be using those terms as well. Uh, we have the temporal lobe and that's separated with the lateral fissure. So again, that's this fissure right here. So fissure are the, the, the valleys. Um, and then as we move back, we have the occipital lobe and the, the occipital lobe is separated from the parietal lobe by the parietal occipital fissure. So all these terms are very related. So it, it makes it a little easier to remember. So on the uh, medial part, so towards the center, the parietal occipital fissure is really easy to find. But then as you kind of move out and laterally, it becomes a little more difficult to, to find. So what we look for is the preoccipital notch, which is kind of like an indentation at the, at, around this point here. And then you kind of draw an imaginary line from the parietal occipital fissure to the preoccipital uh, notch. And then behind that, that will be the occipital lobe. Okay. Uh, I hope that makes sense to everyone. All right, so typically uh, there's a lot of variability across different brains. So ideally we like to start with a model to familiarize yourself and to know what to expect, right? So uh, this is the front of the brain, this is the back. Um, we have, we're looking at the left side of the brain and the left side is separated from the right side of the brain by a longitudinal fissure. Um, and so, this, this will be here. And so when, when we're looking at the, the frontal lobe, the first part that we see the most medial is the superior frontal gyrus. So that's over here. And then you have the next thing down is a sulcus because uh, that separates the two gyri. 
So the, then we have the superior frontal sulcus, okay? And then just lateral to that end, as we're going down the brain, because the brain is kind of curved, um, we have the middle frontal gyrus, um, and then we have the inferior frontal gyrus even more lateral to that, and that's separated by the inferior frontal sulcus. Um, so they, like I said, they're, they're terms that are uh, very related. So we have superior frontal and then superior frontal, so gyrus and then sulcus, and then middle frontal is kind of on its own. So this is, try to remember this, like middle sulcus, the middle frontal gyrus is kind of on its own. And then we have the inferior frontal sulcus and then inferior frontal gyrus. Okay, so very easy to remember. Okay, so now as we're moving back, we have the precentral sulcus. And then we have the uh, precentral gyrus. Here it's called the anterior central gyrus, but typically we call it the precentral gyrus. Um, and then this is the central sulcus, okay? So this is a landmark that we need to learn how to find. Um, and I will show you some more tips on how to find that. Um, so this is the central sulcus, and then we have the postcentral gyrus. So the precentral and the postcentral are known for the motor, uh, known to have the motor, the primary motor um, cortex, and then the uh, somatosensory motor, uh, somatosensory cortex. Okay, and then as we're moving back into the parietal lobe, we have the superior parietal lobe, and then we have the inferior parietal lobe. So there's just two here to remember. Um, whereas at the front, in the frontal lobe, we had the, the three, the superior, middle, and inferior. Okay, and then uh, remember the parietal occipital fissure. So on the medial section, this is what it looks like. Uh, so we can easily see it. And then as we move more laterally, it kind of disappears. But then we have the preoccipital notch, which is just over here. So if we draw an imaginary line through that, at the back is the occipital lobe. Okay. So then uh, as we move to the lateral um, area of the brain, so we have the uh, superior temporal gyrus at the very top, and then we have the middle temporal gyrus, and then we have the inferior temporal gyrus. And they're, again, they're separated by some sulci, so the superior temporal sulcus, and then the middle temporal sulcus, okay? So very, uh, terms that are related so it makes it easier to remember what they are okay so i did promise that i was going to show you a tip so i got i also got this tip from michael um so a tip to find the central sulcus on a brain that looks like this or a complete brain um we looked for the superior frontal sulcus okay so once we find that we know that it ends at the precentral gyrus okay and so of course what's behind the precentral gyrus we have the central sulcus and it looks like an omega, right? And then on, a, on an MRI scan, um, you don't get to see the whole brain at once. Uh, typically we're looking at different slices. So if you look for the omega hand, uh, omega shape, uh, that's the central sulcus, okay? So then before that is the precentral, and then behind that is the postcentral. Um, and this is for uh, anyone's interested in um, what this region uh, that represents. It's the motor hand area. Okay, so um, for anyone who knows uh, what free surfer is, um, and I think most of us do, uh, this is kind of um, a free surfer uh, a, a model that has been put together. So uh, I think we all have access to this. Um, so this is just an example of what we can see. So we have the superior temporal, middle temporal, oh, it's moving, uh, inferior temporal. And then here we can look at the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe. Oh. Um, so this is just a good example. I thought I'd just pop that in, in there um, just to show you uh, what, what, what we may be exposed to at least. And then at the back here. And then I wonder if we can see the occipital notch, um, the preoccipital notch, which is just over here. Okay, so, um, yes, you saw that. All right, so quiz time. I hope you've all been paying attention. Um, so please type in the question and answer section if you know what A, B, and C are. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay, anyone? 
So just a hint, we have, so this is the front of the brain. This is the back of the brain. We have the superior frontal, no? And then we have, um, great. Okay, so we have A equals superior frontal gyrus, which is fantastic. Can anyone tell me? Yeah, medial frontal gyrus and then inferior frontal gyrus. Oh, I lost that. Great. Um, and then can anyone tell me what D and E are? Please just go ahead and type. This is a safe space. You're allowed to make mistakes. Precentral and then postcentral. Fantastic. So the D is precentral and then the E is postcentral gyrus. It's good to see some people, you know, paying attention. Um, can anyone tell me what uh, F and G are. So uh, this one's a little tricky, um, but if you mix them them up, I'll, I'll accept that too. So anyone F and G? Come on, we're on the lateral side of the brain. Superior. Okay, so we have a superior and inferior temporal. However, it's we can't really see inferior from this um, Great. So we can't really see the inferior. What, we, what we're seeing is the middle. So that's great. Um, and then can anyone tell me what uh, H, uh, what are we up to? K and H are? H and K, whichever. Uh, anyone? So we're in the, we're in lobes now. So we're in the, pro okay. Try not to give the answer. Um, Okay, inferior parietal and superior parietal. Great, okay, fantastic. And then, all right, and then can anyone, oh, I didn't really go through this. Okay, well, I'm not gonna quiz you guys on this one because I didn't really mention it, but some people might um, split the occipital lobe into the middle superior and inferior occipital, but we won't go through that for now. Fantastic, thank you everyone for, oops, easy. Okay, so thanks everyone for answering. So we'll have a couple more quizzes after. So what we're gonna do now is look at the medial part of the brain. Okay, so we're gonna uh, look, we're gonna kind of cut through the brain in this, in this way, okay? And then um, we're gonna look, so we know the superior frontal gyrus already, right? That hasn't changed, okay? Um, this out of the way. Okay, so we know the superior frontal gyrus, we're well aware of where it is, um, and so, oops. Excuse me. Okay, so then as we're moving back, we have the paracentral lobule. And um, this is the medial aspect, and it's a continuation of the pre and post central gyri. Um, it's actually the lower limb representation. And if we remember, so this is the central sulcus. Um, okay, so then as we're moving back, we have the precuneus. So this is part of the superior parietal lobe but this is the medial axis. And for anyone interested in its function, we know that it's involved in the default mode network. And then as we're moving back, we have the cuneus. So the cuneus means uh, a wedge. So you can, you can kind of see it looks like a wedge. And its, uh, it's outline is the parietal occipital fissure and then the calcarine fissure here, okay? So it's creating this wedge. Um, and it's part of the visual processing. Um, and then as we're moving down, we have the lingual gyrus and then the hippocampal gyrus. So we're moving into the temporal lobe. Um, uh, yeah, and then uh, we know the corpus callosum. So I think we're all well aware of what that looks like, okay? So then when we look above that, so the gyrus just above that, that's the cingulate gyrus um, involved in the limbic system for anyone interested. Um, and then we have the cingulate sulcus on top of that. Um, I think I went through. Okay, so let's look at that on a, an actual brain. So just to confuse you, we flipped it. So we're looking on the, um, on the other side. <laughs> We've kind of just looked on the other side of the brain. Um, just, you know, for kicks. All right. So what we're going to look at is the cingulate gyrus. So remember, we know... We know this uh, white matter region here. So we're very well aware of it. So the one gyrus just on top of that, and this guy has kind of two coming out here. 
with the one gyrus on top of that is the cingulate gyrus. Okay, and then as we move this way, we can see, remember I said medially, you can see very clearly the parietal occipital fissure. Um, so this is medial section. So we can see that very clearly. Um, and so then we can see the cuneus. So if you can kind of guess where this wedge is, right? So this is the cuneus, so it's creating this wedge. So that means oh, that that is the calcarine fissure. Okay, and then we have the lingual gyrus just below that. And that's, if anyone's interested in its function, it's linked to processing vision related to letters, um, as well as other things, I believe. Okay, and then we have the parahippocampal gyrus just over here. And then we have the hippocampus, which is just over here. So remember how uh, I was explaining the fornix and it kind of looks like it was connected to some nearby structures. Um, it's not. So you can clearly see here that it's its own structure, the fornix, and it's connected. It's connecting the hippocampus to the mammillary bodies, which we will go through a little later. Okay, I hope that's clear. Okay, so if we take the lateral sulcus and we pull it apart, kind of like this, what we're going to expose is the insula. And so the insula is an island of gray matter surrounded by white matter. Okay, and this one, it's, if you read any papers about anything related to pain, you'll have some sort of insula um, reference. Um, and so depending on the parcellation technique that you use, this region, the insula, can be divided into anywhere between 2 and 13 uh, subdivisions. Okay, so we're going to quickly jump into the ventriculus, ventricular system, only because it's a very good set of landmarks for some future regions that I'm going to describe. Okay, so the ventricles are uh, four interconnected cavities. Um, so we have the left and right lateral ventricle. So this is the lateral ventricle and this is the lateral ventricle. So left and right. So you can see here the left and right lateral ventricles are snug within the hemispheres. We have here the third ventricle. Okay. And it kind of looks like a goose, right? So this is, if you, I, don't know, I guess use your imagination. Uh, this is the head of the goose and then you have the beak and then the neck. Um, remember that because there's a reason why I'm telling you this. Um, and then that's the third ventricle. And then we have the cerebral aqueduct connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. Okay, so, oh, oh great. Okay, so uh, if we just look at the third ventricle, we know, so we know that the, the lateral ventricles are stuck, snug within the hemispheres. Now the third ventricle is sitting in this area right over here. So we ha I haven't introduced to you that area just yet, but this is the thalamus and I will go through it in a bit. And then this is the hypothalamus. So if you remember the goose, so the head of the goose is the thalamus region. So that's where the, the, the third ventricle is sitting. And the, um, the hypothalamus, is uh, the, the, vent the third ventricle is also sitting between the two hypothalamus regions, right? And you'll see this a little later. I'll come back to this, just this region anyway. Okay, and then we have the cerebral aqueduct, which is going through uh, the midbrain. And then we have the fourth ventricle, okay? So this is going through the pons and, and then the top part of the medulla. And then this is the cerebellum, just for reference. Okay, so just another view of it. So again, this is the lateral ventricle. It's sitting between, it's sitting snug within the hemispheres. Uh, and then we have the third ventricle, which is sitting between the two thalami and then between also the left and right uh, hypothalamus. So the beak is left and right hypothalamus and then the, the head is the thalamus. And then the fourth ventricle is just over here and the cerebral aqueduct is within the midbrain. Okay, so quiz number two. Can anyone tell me, first of all, what this ventricle is? We have two chats open. Third ventricle, brilliant, thank you. Okay, 
then can anyone tell me this area here, the third ventricle, so the head of the goose, uh, what is it sitting, the, the, the ventricle is sitting between what two regions in the head of the goose? The thalamus, brilliant. And then the, the beak of the goose, anyone? Goose. Beak is hypothalamus, fantastic. Okay, so then can anyone tell me what this area here? Great, cerebral aqueduct, so great to, to know you guys are listening. Okay, and then, so uh, the cerebral aqueduct is going through what? Brilliant, the midbrain. Okay, and then can anyone tell me what this ventricle is? Fourth ventricle, brilliant. Um, and then that is going through what two regions or behind what two regions? So this is one and then this is the other. Oh, oh, I gave one answer. Uh, Pons and medulla, amazing. Okay, and then, and then that's the cerebellum. Okay, fantastic, thank you. All right, so the reason why we jumped into the ventricular system um, before I continued, it was because we use the ventricular system to um, find the hippocampus. So the hippocampus is part of the limbic system. And so if we look at the ventricular system, so if you remember the lateral ventricle, okay, so this, uh, I haven't really explained the different areas, but this is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, okay? So if we are able to find the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, right, so this is the head, and then the inferior form, uh, horn, so uh, just below that, you have the hippocampus. So if you're ever unsure of how to find it, just find the lateral ventricle and then find the inferior horn of it. Okay, so another view. Um, okay, so here's the hippocampus. It sits right here, right? And uh, it's connected to the mammillary body. So it kind of looks like a seahorse here, the fornix. So the fornix connects the um, hippocampus to the mammillary bodies, which are just over here. Um, uh, yep, and then that's another view. So there's the fornix coming through like that. So these are the axons, okay? Um, all right, so that's a bit about the hippocampus. Um, all right, so once you've found the hippocampus, you can easily find the amygdala, okay? So the, also a component of the limbic system, uh, so the amygdala is just rostral to the hippocampus. So um, just for reference sake, I've put this up here. So you have the hippocampus just over here, and then the amygdala is rostral to that. So if we find the hippocampus, so remember the third, uh, the lateral ventricle, the inferior horn, so the hippocampus, and then the amygdala. Okay, great. Um, all right, so let's jump into the basal ganglia. So the basal ganglia made up of um, mainly the caudate nucleus, which is this area here, and then the lensiform nucleus, which is made up of two regions, the putamen and then the globus pallidus, okay? So the uh, caudate nucleus, we have three regions to it. So we have the head, so it's a C-shaped uh, subcortical structure and it lies near the thalamus, which I'm gonna go through. So remember, look at the, uh, the goose. You can see the goose again. Um, so we have the head of the caudate nucleus, the body, and then the tail just sitting right there, okay? Um, and so how do we find it on an, uh, a, a, a horizontal section? So typically what we look for is the internal capsule, which is an L-shaped here. So when you find the L-shaped uh, internal capsule, there we go. Uh, so this is the L-shaped, you can see it on both sides. So when you're looking at the anterior limb, it separates the head of the caudate nucleus, which kind of um, pushes into the lateral ventricle from the, uh, uh, the lentiform nucleus, okay? And then when you're looking at the lentiform nucleus, you have the outermost version, the outermost part is the putamen, 
and then uh, more medial, so more towards the center, you have the globus pallidus. So it's a little paler, so it's a good way to remember, pallidus, pale. Um, yep, and then that's the posterior limb. So then that separates the lentiform nucleus from the thalamus, okay? So it's, it's a really easy way to remember what each region is. Okay, uh, so that's that. Okay, so on an MRI, that's your next quiz. Um, so the MRI, so can anyone tell me what's the first thing that we look for um, when we are trying to find the basal ganglion? So hint, I'm pointing at it. Great. So we're looking for the internal capsule, okay? So now can anyone tell me what this area is? Uh, I think someone said the caudate nucleus. Great, yes. So the head of the caudate nucleus, fantastic. So then can anyone tell me, uh, yep. So then can anyone tell me what this area is, is the outermost part? Great, Putaman. And then can anyone tell me what the innermost part is? Remember peel, globus pallidus. Fantastic. And then we have the two. Okay, and then, oh, and then, if you didn't see that, can anyone tell me what this area is just over here, the big belly? We have hypothalamus, not quite. Thalamus. Fantastic. All right. Uh, great. It's good to see everyone listening. Okay, so we're going to move down. So we're going to start looking, we're going to look at the diencephalon now. So the diencephalon is made up of the, mostly the thalamus and the hypothalamus. So remember the goose head, we briefly discussed this, but a good way to remember uh, where, where it is and how to find it Again, I took this from Marco, um, is to find the, to grab an ice cream and put it against this kind of region here, right? And the scoop is only going to fit over the thalamus and then the cone is going to fit over the hypothalamus. So that's a good way to remember it. If you ever forget, just bring out your ice cream. Okay, so another view actually is, okay, so what we're looking at now is we have uh, the eyes that will kind of sit over here. This is the brainstem. So this is an extension of the, um, the, the spinal cord. And then so the legs will be coming out of the screen or like downwards out of the screen. Okay, so we're looking at the bottom part of the brain. So one thing that you typically cannot miss is the optic chiasm. And so these are the merging, um, this is the, the area where the, the optic nerves merge. Um, and so when we look uh, uh, below that somewhat, uh, we, are, we are looking at the infundibulum of the pituitary gland, also known as the pituitary stalk. And so the pituitary kind of hangs off of that. And then further down, we're seeing the mammillary bodies, okay? Why am I showing you this? because the hypothalamus actually lies dorsal to these structures. So what does that mean? So uh, we were looking kind of this way up, right? Um, so what, is, what are we looking at? So again, this is the optic chiasm. So remember the, 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 the X, okay? So this is this area here, okay? And then we have the infundibulum of the pituitary gland, so pituitary stalk, which is just kind of below that, um, and then we have uh, the mammillary bodies, okay? So then when we look a little back to that, we are seeing the hypothalamus and then the thalamus behind that as well, okay? So um, when we're looking at this section here, so when we're looking at a section a little back, a little to, to, the, to, the, to the back, we're seeing the thalamus and you can see the two big bellies. Uh, um, can anyone tell me what it is that's lying between the two? Remember the thalamus? What is this area for? Anyone? Great, the third ventricle. Okay, and then um, as we're moving a little forward 
to, into the brain, um, we're seeing the hypothalamus. So can anyone tell me what this region here is as well? The ventricle, I don't know if that was for, anyway, it's a shed, the ventricle. So the beak and then the head. Um, okay, so, uh, oh, here we go. So just a reminder, I've just popped this guy in here so you can see the beak and then the, the, the beak and then the head. All right, so now we're gonna move down into the brain stem. Okay, so uh, Marco likes to put googly eyes on things. Um, I kept it because I think it's really helpful so you know where you are. Um, so remember the optic chiasm, so we're aware of these structures now. So we're gonna jump into the brain stem. So this is the brain stem over here. So we have three regions. We have the midbrain, the pons, and then the medulla. So the midbrain, when you're looking at, uh, at this view, you have these two kind of like, they kind of look like ponytails. And these are the, um, uh, where are we? Yep, so then these two regions, uh, they kind, they're uh, tracts um, that, some of them will uh, stop at the pons, but then some of them will continue into the medulla and become the pyramids. Okay, hope that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so then the pons, you have, it's kind of like a big belly. It's kind of hard to miss. You can't really appreciate the big belly part of it um, on this view, but you will a little later. And then the medulla is made up of these two tracks, so the pyramids, and then these two little bumps on the side. So these are the inferior olives, uh, the, the inferior olives. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, and uh, just before I forget, so these, oh, I think I have it here. Perfect. So these two uh, ponytails, they're called the cerebral peduncles. So they connect the brain stem to the cerebrum, so on top of the brain. Um, and then, yeah, so I went through this and we have the cranial nerves, which we're not gonna go through, the inferior olives and then the pyramids. Okay, so now let's flip this guy over, okay? Remove most of the brain um, and we wanna remove the cerebellum. So this is what we see, okay? So then the top of the brain, we have the midbrain. So on the other side, we have the two ponytails the peduncles, the cerebral peduncles. And then on this side, we have the superior and then the inferior colliculus, the colliculi. So that makes up the midbrain. And then as we're moving down, we're seeing the pons. So the pons, we've had to remove the, uh, the cerebellum. And what connected the cerebellum to the pons are the cerebral peduncles, not to be confused with the uh, Sorry, the cerebellar peduncles, not to be confused with the cerebral peduncles, which I just did. Um, and that's made up of three. So you have the superior middle, which is the largest one, and then inferior. And then below that is the medulla. Okay, so now let's look a, at a mid, mid sagittal section of the, of the brainstem. So we have the top part, which is the midbrain. So that's uh, always good to know. Um, and then remember this this uh, C shaped here, so the posterior commission. Um, so there's the midbrain just over here, and then you can really appreciate the big belly of the pons over here, and then we have the medulla just below it, and then on the back here we have the cere cerebellum. All right. So now a lot of the times, at least most of us that are using um, the are doing MRI scans basically, we need to be able to find which area of the brainstem we're in um, through the slices that we have available. So here are some tips for you. So how do we know that we're at the level of the medulla, okay? So uh, two things you should be looking for. So first of all, this is the brainstem. So we're looking in this section here. So we have the, um, the cerebellum over here. So the nose and the ears, just for reference. So when we look at this section here, so we know that this, this has to be the brainstem, right? It's, it's the cerebellum, it's hard to miss that. So this is the brainstem, but which region of the brainstem? So you look for the two ventral bumps here. So once you find these two ventral bumps, you know that these are the pyramids, especially so if you also have two lateral bumps here on the side, making up the inferior olives, okay? So then you know that you're in the medulla. 
Okay, so then how do we know that we are at the level of the ponds? So what we have here is we have this large belly. <laughs> um, I, I don't know any other way to kind of uh, describe or to help you remember you're in the level of the ponds, but except honestly this large belly that you really can't miss. Um, and so you're at the level of the ponds. Okay, and then the brainstem. So how do we find that uh, we're at the level of the, oh, sorry, the brainstem, the midbrain. So what you look for are Mickey's ears. So we all know what um, Mickey looks like, Mickey Mouse. So if you can see Mickey's ears here on the side, um, so these are the cerebral peduncles, and then he also has a nose. So this is the cerebral aqueduct. So if you remember, that's the, um, the it's a connection between the third and the fourth ventricle, okay? So this is how you know you're at the midbrain. Okay, so I guess I finished a little early. Um, thank you everyone for participating. Um, a special thanks to Marco for a lot of his um, slides. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Please type.